Today's lesson is called Springtime for Polar Bears, Visiting Svalbard. Hello everyone, my name is Jeff. I'm Roger, and we are in the month of March now, so I guess it's considered spring, and this might be a good time for you to go traveling someplace in the world if you're interested and if you have free time. One place we recommend you go is someplace... Well, it's not in Norway. It's part of the territory of Norway, but it's actually further north or farther north than Norway. These are the Svalbard Islands. There you go. I've always been interested in these islands. If you pull out a map or if you look at a globe, here are these islands that are basically near the North Pole. They're off the coast of Norway, but Boy, are they ever remote. And for that reason, I've always been somewhat interested in them. Remote places fascinate me. And yes, there are wonderful things to behold in Svalbard. By the way, we keep saying Svalbard. We are talking about a group of islands here. And yes, they're in the Arctic Ocean there. And you can pretty much call Svalbard the North Pole, or at least part of the North Pole, because yes, it is north of the Arctic Circle. Anyways, I say we go ahead and slow down for now, take a short break. But when we come back, we'll start reading our article on Svalbard. Stay tuned. Springtime for polar bears visiting Svalbard. Beyond even the northern coast of Norway lie the islands of Svalbard. Above the Arctic Circle, Svalbard can seem cold and barren to outsiders. But to those who live there, it is like a winter fairy tale, with vast white landscapes and unique wildlife. This spring, consider leaving warm weather behind for the snow and ice. 直北极的,严寒的,像是 a cold Arctic weather system brought snow over the weekend. 寒冷的北极气候在周末带来的雪。或是, the meteorologist predicted Arctic temperatures over the weekend. 气象学家预测周末会出现严寒的温度。另外,这个字也可以当名词,像是 the Arctic,就表示北极,北极地区。例如, most of the polar bears can be found in the Arctic region near the North Pole. 多数的北极熊居住在北极地区,靠近北极点。再来,我们看到单字,outsider。这个字是名词,指外地人,外来者,局外人。像是,Jerry felt like an outsider at his new school until he joined a few clubs. Jerry在他新的学校里感到像一名外来者,直到他加入了一些社团。或是,Because Jason is shy, he often feels like an outsider at parties. 因为Jason很害羞,他在派对上经常觉得自己是局外人。Okay, it's time now for us to discuss the contents of today's lesson. It's springtime for polar bears visiting Svalbard. That's the title of our article for today. Springtime, of course, is now the time in the year when it's spring. Summertime, etc. Wintertime. And here it's springtime. And I guess if you go really far north, uh, near the Arctic Circle or above the Arctic Circle, you're going to see polar bears. Those are those bears that have the white fur. For, although technically I guess it's not really white, it's like reflecting the light or something, but for all intents and purposes, those are big white bears. And you might see some of those if you go to Svalbard. Yes, if you go to Svalbard, it will be springtime, but it will be springtime for polar bears. You'll still be way up there near the North Pole, above the Arctic Circle. So it's still going to be really, really cold. So if you do like cold weather, maybe this is a great springtime travel destination. Anyways, let's go ahead and start reading. The first sentence of our article says... Beyond even the northern coast of Norway lie the islands 
of Svalbard. Notice here we're using the word even here. The northern coast of Norway is already pretty far north, but we're even going beyond that. So beyond even the northern coast of Norway lie the islands of Svalbard. That's where they are. That's where they exist. They are even further north than Norway itself. Above the Arctic Circle, Svalbard can seem cold and barren to outsiders. So if you are from there. You might think everything's normal there. It's not particularly cold here, and it's not particularly barren. But if you are an outsider or somebody who's not from there, somebody from outside, and you're going to think, "Wow, this place is cold. This place is barren. Why would anybody want to come here?" There you go. If you lived there, okay, you'd be an insider. You would know what was going on. You'd have inside information about Svalbard to those who live there. It is like a winter fairy tale with vast white landscapes and unique wildlife to be had there. How cool! Now we've got three vocabulary words to discuss in this sentence. The first of these is the word vast. If something is vast. It's huge. It's very, very big. Yeah, space is vast for the people who live there. They like that. They like things big and wide. And also, we've got landscapes here. That's just the characteristics of the land itself. And in this particular case, they are white landscapes. You know, mountains with snow, and the barren, flat landscape has a lot of snow. Of course, Taiwan here has lush landscapes with lots of trees growing in the mountains. And also, we've got the word unique. Unique, which means special, one of a kind. You go to Svalbard, you're not going to see stuff that you could see in other places. No, no, no. When it comes to wildlife in Svalbard, you've got unique wildlife. How cool! How great! So this spring, consider leaving warm weather behind for the snow and ice. If you like cold weather, this could be quite the destination for you. But if you don't like cold weather, Maybe Svalbard is not for you because yes, if you go to Svalbard, be prepared. There's going to be a lot of snow and ice, but yes, the landscapes there, the views to be had of the nature there are breathtaking, and the wildlife is pretty good too. All right, folks, with that, it's time for us to take a short break, but don't go away. We'll be right back after this. The best time to visit Svalbard is from March to April, when you can witness pastel winter. In March, there's twilight during the day, but it still gets dark at night. That's when you can see beautiful pastel pinks and oranges cast over the snow-covered terrain. Toward the end of April, you can experience the famous midnight sun of the far north as it becomes light 24 hours a day. The second part, we saw the word pastel, which means pastel, red, red. 像是 Tina likes to wear pastel-colored dresses to school. Tina 喜欢穿淡色系洋装去学校。再来，我们看到单字 twilight 这个字是名词，指暮光、黄昏。举例来说 ，We can barely see things clear in the twilight. 我们在暮光中很难把东西看清楚。另外，这个字除了上面的意思，还可以指晚期、暮年，像是。It wasn't until the twilight of his life that the writer finally became famous. 这名作家到晚年才终于成名。接着，我们看到一个名词 terrain， 指地形、地带。例如 ，The explorers had to cross mountainous dry terrain. 探险者必须穿越崎岖干枯的地势。或是 ，The flat terrain beside the lake makes it easy to take a walk. 湖边平坦的地形很适合散步。Okay, now when we travel, of course, we always want to know when the best time is to go to a particular place or to go to a particular destination. So, when is the best time to visit Svalbard? Well, the best time to visit Svalbard is from March to April. Wow, what a coincidence! That's right now, and this is when you can witness. Pastel winter. Now, when I see the word pastel, of course, I think of 
pastels, those kind of、uh, crayons that you use to draw with. Kids use pastels a lot. Crayons are made from wax. Pastel is like made from pigments, and they're a little softer. But here, pastel is referring to soft colors. In Chinese, you tend to say fun, like fun lan. That would be pastel blue. Pastel winter. How interesting. Anyways, more on pastel winter there in Svalbard. In March, there's twilight during the day, but it still gets dark at night. That's when you can see beautiful pastel pinks and oranges cast over the snow-covered terrain. So there you go. In March, there's twilight during the day, and for that reason, you see these beautiful pastel colors, these beautiful pastel pinks and oranges, and these colors are cast over the snow-covered terrain. How cool! How awesome! Now here we have the word terrain to talk about. T R R. A I N. Here, when we're talking about terrain, we're talking about land. Okay, usually a large piece of land, and we're kind of talking about the land and also some of the physical features to be had on that piece of land. And here, we're saying that this is a snow-covered terrain, so we're talking about a large stretch of land that is. Covered in snow. Yeah, terrain. The quality of the land itself. It could be rough terrain, like the Western United States. And this is snow-covered terrain. The land is covered with snow, and then you get the twilight and the different kinds of light colors cast. On all those features, and toward the end of April, you can experience the famous midnight sun of the far north as it becomes light 24 hours a day. So I guess in April there, sometime during the spring, we've got the spring equinox, and after that, we're going to have the midnight sun, which means basically the sun is in the sky pretty much all day long, except during the winter, of course, then it's、uh, dark all the time. Cool. So in March you go there for the pastel colors. In April you go there for the midnight sun. How intriguing! How cool! Anyways, folks, with that, it is time for us to take a short break. But when we come back, we'll be wrapping up the first part of our lesson on Svalbard. While you're there, you can get around like a local by driving a snowmobile as long as you have a driver's license from your home country. This is a great way to get to Svalbard's many ice caves, where you can explore the magical world beneath a glacier. You can also join a snowmobile tour to catch a glimpse of local animal life, including Arctic foxes, reindeer, seals, walruses, and maybe even one of the roughly 3,000 polar bears that wander the islands and surrounding ice. Finally, the third part has a phrase, "get around," which means to go around, to travel. For example, you need a car to get around Los Angeles. In Los Angeles, you need a car to get around Los Angeles. In Los Angeles, you need a car to get around Los Angeles. In Los Angeles, you need a car to get around Los Angeles. In Los Angeles, you need a car to get around Los Angeles. In Los Angeles, you need a car to get around Los Angeles. 这间公司的老板不久将退休的消息传了开来。第二，表示规避法律，避开问题。例如 ，There are some legal ways to get around paying taxes. 有一些合法的途径可以规避缴税。第三，表示找到时间或机会去做。后面接 to 加名词或动词 ing， 像是 I might get around to cleaning the garage this afternoon. 今天下午我可能会找时间去打扫车库。Okay, now if you're in Svalbard, of course you want to enjoy some winter activities. So while you're there, you can get around like a local by driving a snowmobile as long as you have a driver's license from your home country. Now here in Taiwan, of course, if you go down to Kunding, you've got those jet skis that people zoom around on in the water. Well, a snowmobile is similar to that. It's a, a specific vehicle that's designed to ride on snow. 
No. It's got little skis in front, and then it's got these tracks toward the back. That's what a snowmobile is, and that's how they get around there. That's how they transport them from point A to point B. You might be asking people, "Gee, how do you get around Taipei? Do you ride a scooter? Do you take the bus? Do you drive?" I get around by bicycle. Here in Svalbard, there's snow and ice all the time. You can't drive trucks or cars or stuff like that. Maybe there are roads, but once those roads get iced over or covered in snow, it doesn't make sense to drive conventional vehicles anymore. So the people of Svalbard, they don't really drive cars all that often. It says here locals drive snowmobiles. It's kind of like a car, a conveyance that can go over snow and ice without much problem. And get this, if you go there, you can. Drive a snowmobile. You just have to have a driver's license from your home country, so you can show up and get moving and grooving on a snowmobile as long as you have a driver's license from your home country. Anyways, here the word license refers to an official government document that allows you to do something. Let's say you bought a car and you just started driving around. If the police stopped you, they might say, "Hey, that's illegal. You can't drive this car without a driver's license. You have to go to school and you have to pass tests and stuff like that before you can get that license. And the government will allow you to legally drive that car. And if you go to my home state, you're going to have to have a fishing license if you." Want to catch fish like bullheads and walleye and stuff like that? But here, where you can get around on a snowmobile, this is a great way to get to Svalbard's many ice caves, where you can explore the magical world beneath a glacier. Ooh, that sounds like fun. These are caves in the ice there, and it's kind of hard to get to those using other modes of transportation. So the snowmobile is a great way to get to those ice caves to take those pictures.、Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And there's more. You can also join a snowmobile tour to catch a glimpse of local animal life, including Arctic foxes, reindeer, seals, walruses, and maybe even one of the roughly 3,000 polar bears that wander the islands and surrounding ice. By the way, if you do go to Svalbard, do not try to take a selfie with the polar bear. That's a very, very bad idea. Stay on your snowmobile. Keep your distance. Pay attention to your tour guide. Anyways, it says here that you might be able to catch a glimpse of local animal life. Here, if you catch a glimpse of something, you see that thing just long enough. To be able to identify that thing, but often you won't get a detailed view of that thing when you're only catching a glimpse of that thing.、And、that makes sense. Arctic foxes don't want to be seen. They're going to run away and hide the moment that they see you. So maybe you're only going to catch a glimpse of an animal like that. Yeah, the other day I was walking down the sidewalk and I caught a glimpse of my reflection in the window, and I thought, "Gee, who's that handsome devil walking on the sidewalk? Oh, it's me! I had no idea I looked so good." But here, yes, because wildlife, they kind of run around all over the place and they're scared of humans. So you might just catch a glimpse of them. You might see them for a second or two before they run away, and that would include all these different animals that we've listed here: Arctic foxes, reindeer. You know the deer that pull Santa's sled, and seals and walruses. You know those big, kind of seal-like creatures with the big tusks. And then, of course, you might be lucky enough to see that elusive polar bear. But like Jeff said, yeah, don't try to take a selfie with the polar bear. You might die to regret it. Okay, that brings us to the end of our explanation for today. Let's listen now to our Chinese teacher. Hello, students. Hello, everyone. 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 Hello, 那些怎么样的人？那其中的 those 是指 those people， 那些人。我们后面再用 who 引导的形容词子句去修饰前面的先行词 those 来表达那些怎么样怎么样的人。像文中的 those who live there， 那些住在那里的人。
，还有像 those who don't eat meat， 那些不吃肉的人 ，those who are allergic to seafood， 凡是对海鲜过敏的人。好，那特别注意 ，who 是用来代指前方的 those， 所以这个关系子句里面 who 后面的动词是要用复数型。举例来说 ，speed walking is a great form of exercise for those who just want to stay fit。对于那些只想要保持健康的人来说，快走是一种很棒的运动。那我们句子里面用到 those who just want to stay fit， 表示那些只想要保持健康的人。好，读到课文第三部分的第一句，他说 ，While you're there, you can get around like a local by driving a snowmobile as long as you have a driver's license from your home country. 当你在那里的时候，只要你有本国驾照，就能像当地人一样驾驶着雪上摩托车四处跑。那我们这边来学 get around 的不同意思及用法。好，第一种呢，就是课文用法，可以来表达四处走动，到各处旅行。第二种是表达消息传开，这其实跟刚刚的语义蛮接近的哦。当消息跑到各个地方，那就表示传开了。好，第三种 get around 可以表达解决或是回避某事发生。例如 ，they used a loophole to get around tax rules. 他们利用法律漏洞来规避税务规定。好，那么第四种用法呢？我们可以用 get around to 加上名词或动名词来表达抽空去做某事。它通常是用来表达去做你早就想要做的事。那通常因为没有时间、没有机会，或者是事情没有很急，所以就摆着，等到有空的时候再去做。例如 ，I'll get around to paying them a visit eventually. 我最后最终会抽空去拜访他们的。好，那另外补充一下，刚刚那个句子还有用到 as long as， 表示只要怎么样就怎么样，它是用来引导表示条件的副词子句，也可以把它写作 so long as。好，举例来说 ，the dish is easy to cook as long as you follow the recipe。只要你按照食谱，这道菜煮起来就会很简单哦。好，那么以上是今天重点整理，我们回顾今天的单词吧。Outsider。To an outsider, the traditions and customs of this tiny town might seem strange. Vast. The children ran across the vast, empty field. Landscape. We set up camp, built a fire, and admired the desert landscape. Unique. Australia has many unique wild animals. License. The restaurant doesn't have an alcohol license, so it can't sell beer or wine. Glimpse. We went in the bakery to get a glimpse of the cake selections. Okay, everyone. With that, today's article is now complete. But as always, we sure hope that you guys have enjoyed reading along with us. Anyways, I'm Jeff. I am Roger. See, See you next time. time.